Welcome to MechConnect 2011, a hands-on event featuring the very best in tools, equipment and diagnostics. In this feature, we'll be talking with Frank Massey about exciting developments in training, as well as dropping in on Frank's seminar on the Passport to Expert training program. Here at AutoInform, this is our kind of gathering, so we took the chance to mingle with the great and the good and check out the latest developments in diagnostics. All refreshed, we caught up with Frank ahead of his seminar to discuss his thoughts on the event and the importance of continual learning. What we're doing today really is uh, an overview of the training which we provide, which is designed to bring new technology and skills to independents who perhaps have perhaps lost some touch with, with the change in technology. So we run a whole range of programs from foundation level right through to some fairly sophisticated high-end programs as part of a, I suppose, a, what we'd call a three-year uh, program from start to finish. It's just part of what we do in training. We obviously provide um, DVD film footage to support and back up the training we do. And we're also working very much towards uh, and making it available for pay-for-view online. Um, and also uh, a very, very uh, interesting program with the IMI, uh, training the lecturers, training the trainers in effect. So really, quite busy. Um, love these events because you tend to meet some new people. Uh, the new generation of people who realise that technology now is a, a challenge. I think it always will be. And generally, at these events, the idea is that we will recruit or at least create an interest from, from the independent garages that training now is an issue. Um, I think in the old days, apprenticeships were seen as a one shot in the arm. That's it, once you pass your apprenticeship, you, you are skilled for life. Uh, Today, if you relax on training for 12 months or more, you're actually effectively out of touch with some of the changes that's taking place. I think traditionally, um, independents and, and technicians had the view, and I think still do in many cases, where they consider an apprenticeship or formal training perhaps for a college as the only training they need to equip them for the rest of their, their commercial life. And that's not the case now. This, this industry, in fact, everything in our world is now being driven by, by rapid change in technology. Uh, literally everything from washing machines, but cars really are so advanced now that, that the, 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 the number of skills you need now are quite complex. Good mechanical dexterity, so mechanical systems are more advanced. Good, uh, good uh, logic thought process or diagnostic capability. Um, and good with IT skills. Um, we're delivering software into vehicles, we're interrogating them through software. And there's nobody actually training the balance of these skills as a package. Um, I think where our programs differ is that this is commercial skill brought to the training environment and the program with the GAU is, uh, well initially, uh, a UK nationwide based program bringing these new people uh, on board, the, you know, the new generation of people who are investing in, in technology and, and, and training and it's one way that we can advertise what we're doing, we come regionally, we're prepared to travel so that they can attend these courses within their area. Um, it's quite a, um, a methodical program as much as we start with foundation skills and build other programs on top of that, specialist programs, common rail, uh, ignition, injection, um, all of the systems that the car now currently uses and, and really just reinforcing some of those new skills in, in that training and we do it either at local colleges, sometimes actually in commercially based businesses where we, we literally turn their workshop into a, a training environment. The courses that we run are uh, very much practical hands-on, based on around 10, 12 people. And the idea is that they all actually get some genuine hands-on experience. We want them to have the confidence, the feel of the tools and equipment. A lot of the processes that we employ are quite revolutionary in as much as we, we tend to throw the rule book away and develop a, a process or procedure in testing components which is, um, I would say unique, but very focused, very accurate, um, saves time, saves money, becomes commercially effective, in other words it's profitable, uh, and, and that, those are the skills that we, we, we bring within our programme. We're quite happy and obviously enjoy doing it. And we learn a lot from it as well. I mean, we're, we're not complacent. There's a lot we can learn meeting other people. They've got different experiences. Uh, so I always view, take a, a view that if we're going out, we're training people, uh, I always go prepared to learn as well. And of course Frank was here to deliver a tech talk on the Passport to Expert training programme, plus the importance of training to stay one step ahead of the competition. 
Why is there a need for technical training? Well, I'm sure most of those reasons have already been answered by yourselves. The fact that you sat in the seats is the first reason. All of us need to learn all of the time. If you think that I have all the answers, you're going to be very disappointed. I do, however, have a process in place whereby I can find out those things I need to find out in order to repair the car. Um, but long gone are the days when a formal apprenticeship um, was enough to last a lifetime. The change in pace of technology in cars today is such that um, even people like ourselves, who are quite literally spending most of our lives daily facing technology, um, having to work very hard to keep up with it. Um, and some of the outcomes of that, some of the challenges uh, we'll bring out in the presentation about how we organise our business, how we market the business, and how we equip ourselves to be able to continue in business, uh, both profitably uh, and effectively. I used to make the expression, or, or, or the point, train to make profit. I've changed that a long time ago now. Training is a necessity to stay in business. If you do not invest in training, and the tools and infrastructure uh, involved in this process with technology, then you literally will not be in a lucrative or a viable business within a five year period. And I'll explain why a little later on. Where things are changing very rapidly is that the vehicle as we know it today is in effect a series of computers on a network system. And there's as much interface with the computing system as there is with the mechanical functionality on the cars. So it's, it's a very tough challenge. There are, in effect, three distinct skills that the modern technician needs. And it's balancing these skills to match your business needs that's, that's something that we tend to be uh, specialists at. The first skill is an obvious one. You have to be a good mechanical engineer. Mechanical systems have advanced just as much now as electronic control. Engine, transmission systems, braking systems, all employ comp complex machinery for it to function as effectively as it does. They require a lot of software interface. Fixing some of these problems, updating some of these problems now involves software patches, flash program downloads. And of course, the third skill is actually having what we call logic thought process. Um, I call it common sense sometimes. Logic thought process is having a procedure in place for testing certain types of components. And that's very much how we train people. If you understand how a particular component functions, you can transfer that, that process, that technique, and indeed those tools to a different but similar component on another system. The Passport to Export program does have a structure. It has a logical process which will build up those skills progressively over the course of the program beginning with the foundation skills, which we think are very important because a lot of the techniques and process that we employ in testing systems are quite unique. The type of tools we use, although not entirely unique, the application of the tools we believe are, the way we use them, the way we extract information. Um, I'm going to go through some of the test procedures with you a little later. All mean that these foundation skills have to be in place before you're going to get the most benefit from some of the other more specialised modules, such as common rail, ABS brakes, and, and CAN networks, etc. So the foundation course is very important. In the silver programme, <coughs> we look at ignition systems. Now, we do actually look at ignition systems as part of the foundation module course, but we start to get a little bit more um, intuitive, um, some of the test techniques will perhaps be at a more advanced level because all the subjects remain the same throughout all of the three awards, but bronze, silver and gold. But the level at which we deliver these courses will have taken into account that you will already have some hands-on knowledge and a great deal more confidence. And maybe you've already invested in some of the equipment and tools which we use, so you're having to adapt to those new skills as well. So we look at ignition systems, components testing, fuel trim, common rail diesel, and CAN networks. So the Gold Award, um, you'll have a lot of experience now, a lot of confidence in using some of the tools and techniques. Um, 
so we go more deeply into the tool. One of the skills with oscilloscope that run in parallel is the ability to use the tool to test a component and also the ability to manipulate the tool to achieve that result. So there's two skills. Knowing what and why you're testing it and knowing how to test it. And, and we try to initially, past the foundation course, train you how to actually evaluate the component with enough instruction on the oscilloscope but not too much A to put you off but to get gain and grow your skill uh, and confidence and then later on we then start to reinforce those skills to use the oscilloscope intuitively, manually um, and much more flexibly. What do you do next? Two day foundation course, um, the dates are there um, where you get an overview of all those subjects or a, a good number of those subjects as part of the foundation course at a local venue, uh, Hickley's in Taunton and then Devon College, the dates are there. It's coordinated with Group Auto, you do not apply through us, you will do that through your local parts factor. They do get booked up quickly, the numbers, about 10 plus 2, no more than 12. Um, and once they're booked up, uh, obviously, um, we'll then have to, if there's an overflow, and that'd be a nice position to be in, we'll have to set some of the dates further in the year. Um, the costs, um, once again, all this is, is arranged through your local parts factor, uh, £300 for a two-day course. Other specialist modules, some of them are one-day courses. And I think the costs of the DVDs are here also. So once again, you can buy any of these subjects on DVD. I think it's a special price if you go and buy them all. In fact, there's definitely a special price if you buy them all. So there's endless ways in which you guys can train and build up your skill sets whether it's face-to-face, -face, DVD, through the magazine, and, and or through the technical forum. To get in the technical forum, you have to go on the training program. And the main reason for that is that when you pose or ask questions, you have in place the right test procedure to ask the right questions. And that way, um, you will get some very accurate answers and support and help. So I'll summarize, um, top class training. I'm not gonna say that, but Structured, structured training course, IMIT accreditation, and delivered in uh, conjunction with Group Auto and their factors, which covers the entire country.